Trustee Austin. Um, just a, a couple of things. Again, the figure of thousand dollars is mentioned as a deficit, and I'd like to be clear, it was $2.1 million. We got to $800,000 by cutting out 17 point something full-time teachers, which can't be good for kids when you're cutting teachers from the school district. Um, and I think that bears repeating. Um, people have been, I would say, not particularly forthcoming with the numbers, and it is $2.4 million, and we got there by cutting teachers. To the chair, the, the the funding, the decrease in funding from 2011-12 to 2012-13, decrease in funding is 800,000. The 2.3 million dollars that Trustee Oxman is referring to is the amount of shortfall that we would be if we kept at exactly the same activity level as the 2011-12 year, and so that that shortfall is made up by three major components. Uh, roughly $800,000 to slightly over $800,000 reduced revenue from the province. The previous year we had, in that same order, around $800,000 that we brought in a surplus from the year before that, and that wasn't brought in a surplus this year. And then the third item was just under $800,000 of, uh, of additional cost that we would incur by keeping exactly the same activity level as in the 2011. So the, the $2.3 million shortfall certainly was the starting point. There's no doubt about that. That starting point was made up of those three different components. One of them was revenue from the province, one of them was our own revenue from previous year's surplus, and the third was additional costs. Thank you. Put myself on the list very briefly. Um, the reason that I'm supporting this initiative to seek additional funding from the ministry and to continue on this course is that I believe that in the time that I've been a trustee and before that, we have made cuts that have cost us. None of the cuts that we've made, and oddly enough, have actually been savings. They have wound up creating a cascade of declining enrollment and loss of children to our system, and this will continue. It's also meant that our facilities, the facilities of which we as trustees are stewards, are not able to be cared for in the way we know our staff would love to care for them. And that's a, a great worry. Those things all have costs. I find it financially astounding that we would see any of this as a savings, because we all know that it's not. It's not a savings when it comes to our kids or to our facilities. Um, I was talking at the meeting last night with Lake Cowichan, and I mentioned the fact that we've been told by teachers and the educators that there are a great many at-risk kids in the schools right now, a great many children with challenges. We don't have the funding to do what we need to do for them. But I wonder now, what comes first? Do we have more at-risk children because we've withdrawn so much from our system? I believe that that may be so. And that's something that we have to consider. I also ask the question, do we have you know, fewer resources now because we have fewer children? Or do we have fewer children because we have so few resources with which to look after them? Um, I see the trajectory that this is on. I have sat for seven budgets, and I have heard over and over again people tell me that all we have to do is be creative, that all we have to do is come up with ways of making money, I don't understand this because I think our job as a school district is to teach our children not to make money. We know that that the revenue stream is the government, and I think the job we do is a big enough job without adding on to it being captains of commerce. Despite that, I have never once sat in a room and had anyone, no matter how enthusiastic, come to a board and tell us how we can actually make up these shortfalls, these dreadful shortfalls, with, with a, a recommendation that would provide even close to the amount of money that we're short. We can pick up 60 grand here if we charge for busing. We can pick up 80 grand if we close a school. But you know what? That ain't gonna do it, folks. It's just not gonna do it. And every time we charge for busing, if we want to charge for busing, if we cut busing, if we close schools, we just lose kids. Yeah. So we're caught in this, this terrible dilemma that goes around and around and around. 
And the only thing you can do when you're going around and around and around is step off the track. That's why I'm here. money found to truck in the snow and a helicopter in snow to make sure people had snow to ski on for the Olympics. Where did that money come from? They found the money. The dome at BC Place, they found the money to put that new roof on when it went well over budget. Now, to me, if you have a budget and you need to go over the budget, I'm following what their example is giving us as taxpayers in this province. So that's why I'm going to stand up for the human cost and not the cost. Thank you, Chair. I know this is my second time. I'll, I'll be brief. I, I think the, one of the fundamental differences from uh, Mr. Bruce's position in mine is that um, I campaigned on doing exactly this. Uh, the community elected me. Uh, they had no misunderstanding that I would um, uh, collaborate, and I'll, I'll use the word collaborate with the ministry in, in uh, passing budgets that don't meet the needs of our kids. And the more that we do, the more that we um, go along, the more we're saying it's okay. We're voting in favor, voting in favor of customer kids. We have a strategic plan. We have, and, and this goes back to um, Kathy's uh, decision, oh well, we didn't meet with the board. We have a, a, a strategic plan that lays out what our goals are for our district. And we keep cutting programs that are the goals and the aims of that strategic plan. And it's a very modest strategic plan, and we can't meet those goals and objectives uh, with the funding that's there. Um, so uh, I only support it. Thank you. I will be supporting um, this motion as well. I think that um, we have a responsibility to our children and our staff um, as a trustee for three budgets, in which I often thought that we were calling the herd as we cut programs and, and we said, this is too expensive, we can't afford this any longer, when we knew that these were the needs that our children had. And um, it was painful, and I, it was painful for everyone around the table because we all acknowledged those programs were valuable. And at some point, we have to say, we can't keep expecting everyone to give more and more and more with less and less and less. Our children deserve to have quality public education that meets the needs um, for them. And um, I consulted, I have an elder that I consult with, um, and I go to her and I say, I'm, I'm scared about this, I'm, I'm nervous, I'm doing the right thing. And um, I said, you know, they could fire us, they could, I could be removed. And um, she said, well, honey, if you keep doing these cuts that hurt children, they've already removed our voice. It's already gone. So, um, <laughs> so I think what, um, and they needed to hear that. It's always, in our culture, we always go to our elders for advice. It's fantastic. Um, but I feel very um, sure that we need to stand up and begin a conversation around what the real needs for our children in our district are. And um, I would like to point out as well that I um, am very hopeful and I have um, a lot of confidence in um, this government and the Ministry of Education that they want to have conversations with us. And um, I have to say that within our meeting with the Deputy Minister, they must have mentioned June 30th about 16 times um, that we have till June 30th. June 30th is the magic date. And so I feel confident in taking this step and then hopefully having some really great conversations about what our kids need. It's about time. I just want to uh, add that um, I'm not unaware there are consequences. I didn't get to my great age without being wary of consequences. And um, but I have to tell you that I believe we can talk to the minister. 
I just think that it's important to take a strong position. This, this district is actually sent in parallel needs budgets, and we have found ourselves, uh, well, in these budgets, we never even got comment back on them, let alone any sort of response that indicated that they understood. Um, I believe that if our community stands with us, the minister may listen. I do believe that. I actually found out that there are human beings at the ministry last Friday. And it was actually quite a heartening thing to discover. I've never been there before. I often wonder what was inside that building. I want to promise everyone here that this board, whatever happens, has not left this district in any jeopardy. All our staffing has only gone up to the allocation that we have already received. We have done nothing precipitous that it would in any way hurt this district. We will leave it in as good a shape as we could possibly leave it. And that came out during our, our meeting with the minister. Joel very kindly pointed that out. So I don't want anyone to worry about that. But I would, I would encourage people here and all our trustees to worry about our board because I believe in democracy and I very much regret having to go. But sometimes you have to take a strong position. Is there any more comment? All those in favor? Opposed. Opposed is Trustee Kramer, Trustee Bruce, Trustee Spaceberg, and Trustee Schmidt.